are going to go through the three main types of cells and some of the structures that are important in each cell type. We're going to start off with the simplest, the prokaryotic cell, using the example of a bacteria. Um, again, this is pretty primitive. It doesn't have any internal membrane-bound organelles, but there still are a couple important things that we want to talk about. Um, surrounding the bacterial cells, separating the internal from the external environment is the plasma membrane. Um, and then outside of that plasma membrane, there is a cell wall. The cell wall is more rigid. Um, it gives the cell structural support and stability. Also outside, even more outside of the cell wall is the capsule. And a capsule is used for protection. So if, for example, um, this bacteria infected your body and white blood cells were trying to eat it so that you didn't get sick, this capsule would offer some protection to the bacterial cell. The fluid inside of the plasma membrane is called the cytoplasm. It's uh, sort of a watery, um, gel-like material and floating throughout that cytoplasm are these little green dots which are called ribosomes. These aren't organelles but they're really important structures and the purpose of the ribosome is to create proteins. Um, inside the cytoplasm we also have freely floating the DNA and the DNA is sort of condensed in one area and so we call that one area the nucleoid region. And we don't call it a nucleus because it's not surrounded by a membrane but that would be the nucleoid region. Outside for movement, uh, we have a flagella, okay, which the bacteria can wave back and forth to propel it through the environment. And then we also have multiple pili. The singular is pilus. And the purpose of the pili is for attachment. So the pili allow two bacteria to attach to one another or maybe to another surface in their environment. We're going to compare the prokaryotic cell to a eukaryotic cell, the animal cell, and this is much more advanced. It has multiple organelles, um, it, but it does have some similarities. For example, we still have a plasma membrane or a cell membrane that separates the inside of the cell from the external environment. The fluid inside is still called the cytoplasm, and all of the organelles are going to float around in that cytoplasm. The most important organelle which acts as the brain is the nucleus. This right here is the nucleus. Um, the fluid inside the nucleus is called the nucleoplasm. The um, membrane that surrounds the nucleus is called the nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane. And the structure inside right here is called the nucleolus. And the job of the nucleolus is to um, actually create the ribosomes. And the ribosomes are then transported through the nuclear envelope through these little holes called nuclear pores. So that's how the ribosomes can exit and do their job in the cytoplasm. So the nucleus is important, it holds the DNA. Directly attached to the nucleus is the rough ER, and it's called rough because it looks rough under the um, microscope. ER stands for endoplasmic reticulum, so rough ER is the abbreviation. And the rough ER's job is to um, modify proteins, and the reason why it looks rough is because it has lots and lots of ribosomes on the external surface. This makes the process very efficient. The ribosomes make the proteins, and then the proteins go directly into the rough ER where they're modified. Um, the cell also has the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or smooth ER. It doesn't have any ribosomes, which is why it has a smooth-like appearance. It doesn't need ribosomes because its job is to make fats. It doesn't have anything to do with proteins. Um, both the rough ER and the smooth ER will transport their um, fats and proteins over to the Golgi apparatus, or sometimes it's also called the Golgi bodies. The purpose of the Golgi is to package um, and ship out the products to other organelles in the cell. So I always think of the Golgi bodies as the UPS. All the molecules go there, they're packaged up, and they're shipped out to their final destination. And the structure that actually does the shipping and acts sort of like the UPS truck is called the vesicle. So the vesicle will carry molecules from one location in the cell to another. There are some specialized vesicles called lysosomes, which are used for digestion. So they have enzymes in them that will break down um, larger molecules. Another really important structure is the mitochondria. 
The purpose of the mitochondria is to make ATP, which is the energy currency of the cell. So without the mitochondria, the cell could not survive. Some structures that um, aren't easily visible but are also important are the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is a network of proteins found within the cytoplasm that act to give the cell structure and um, manipulate and move the organelles efficiently through the cytoplasm. And also, sometimes there are external structures. There can be a tail-like structure that's called a flagella, which the animal cell can use for movement. For example, a sperm cell has a flagella. Um, or you can have multiple small projections, which also wave back and forth, like um, hairs, and those are called cilia. And the purpose of cilia is also movement. So you can have one long flagella, or you can have multiple smaller cilia. So let's compare the animal cell to another eukaryotic cell, the plant cell. And you see we have a lot of the same structures. We have the plasma membrane, we have the cytoplasm, mitochondria, vesicles, lysosome, Golgi, smooth ER, rough ER, nucleus with the nucleolus and the nuclear envelope, um, ribosomes. But we have a couple additional structures, so I want to focus on those. The first one, which is really important, is the chloroplast. Um, the chloroplast job is photosynthesis. Remember that plants are autotrophic um, organisms and so they need to create their own food by capturing the sunlight and converting that energy into carbohydrates. And that's what happens in the chloroplast. There's also um, this area here which is called the vacuole and the main purpose of the vacuole is storage. So um, there's a lot of water in there, there's also some protein, some waste, and it can also act to increase the surface area of the plant cell. The last structure that I want to point out which is outside is the cell wall. The cell wall surrounds the plasma membrane and it gives the plant some extra support and um, stability. So those are three structures that are only found in the plant cells and not in the animal cells.